Binance is going beyond an NFT marketplace to creating an initial game offering platform. Decentraland has hosted its first official Metaverse festival and more signs of mainstream adoption as the new edition of Photoshop will include a prepare as NFT option. It's a wonderfully waxy week and many popular brands have announced their intents to mint on wax. As for us, it's your favorite father-son duo back for another edition of Nifty News on episode number one. 104 of the nifty show looking into the future what do we see it's lined with digital collectibles we call them nfts games trading cards digital art and those crypto kitties joel and zach are the hosts you'll know joel and zach say this will blow the lot the lot is so ready set go it's the nifty really kind of spiffy the nifty Show. Welcome to the Nifty Show, episode number 104. Nice intro read, Zach. Thank you very much, Joel. You, uh, it's dad. It's dad. You call I will dad. switch between the two at will. And I Interchangeably. Often do. Yeah, you do, actually, and that's fine. I mean, you're almost 30 years old. I guess you can call me whatever the hell you want. As long as you're not cursing me out, I'm good with it. And uh, I think we're your, you know, for some people, we might be a, a more favored father-son duo than their own relationships. Like, I like you guys better than I like my own family. Screw those well, you guys. Know, it, is, it is genuinely nice that we have a, such a good relationship that we can be both excellent friends and excellent business partners and that we can share all of these experiences together. I know. But I do it's... hope that uh, all of our father-son relationships in the audience, uh, if they are having that thought that those improve. Yes. Quick order. Go work on that, guys. Gosh, don't be so difficult with your relationships. All right. It is time stamping for October the 26th in the year of 2021. It's 5.45 p.m. The overall crypto market cap, $2.7 trillion dollars everything is is still roaring of course if we look at the top projects on um on coin gecko.com board ape yacht club is up top with the mutant apes cool cat cyber kongs doge pound creature world cypherian inu that's a that's a new one cryptodes fluff world and the forgotten runes wizards cult topping out the top 10 and i got a little bit of a rant here zach I tweeted yeah. this earlier because people talk about blue chip NFT projects. You know, what is the, a blue chip? Well, in the traditional um, stock markets, the blue chip stocks are your evergreen stocks that have been around for ages, right? You know, your, mm. your General Motors, your Exxon, uh, Microsoft, Apple, the, the Dow Jones, right? You're, those are the blue chip stocks and stock financial advisors will tell you to hold a certain amount of portfolio and blue chip stocks. People talk about blue chip NFTs. And the reason I ranted is because the majority of these projects have not been around to be tested over time to call them blue chips. If there's any blue chips in the NFT world, it's crypto punks and maybe bored apes, even though they've been around for even less than a year. The bored apes that is crypto punks or OG from 2017. Calling newer projects just because they've blown up and people are paying a lot for them right now, blue chips is silliness. What do you think? Well, you know, what, what I've noticed is that uh, a lot of NFT hodlers will go out of their way to pump the value of the NFTs that they're holding as much as they can. And so my inner cynic is suggesting that perhaps some people are using the term blue chip in order to increase the value of assets that they already possess. Because my outer like cynic is them. doing that. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have no problems. Of course, people are shilling for what they believe in and everybody thinks their community is the best and they might be right. I just think it's too soon to be calling projects that have not stood the test of time. And by the way, those of you in the NFT space, a month is not a period of time 
that, you know, would indicate whether or not something is going to be successful for the long term. It's just not. If you look at the crypto market caps over the years, the top 10 change every year. And there are some that are in the top 50 right now that you hadn't heard of last month or last week. And there are some that were in the top 10 four years ago that are done. There's nothing left of them. The, the token failed. So let's not be foolish about this and position things realistically. Just because something comes out of the box and is hot doesn't make it blue chip. And I can see a loophole here as well. If you're if you're one of those people and you're thinking, well, I'm calling it blue chip because it's going to be blue chip while well, you're making a financial prediction when you say that. And hopefully you don't look foolish 10 years down the line when the term could actually apply. People don't hold anybody to what they've, the predictions they made. I can't tell you how many people have predicted this coin's going to moon and Bitcoin's going to be X price by this Buck date. Cheap. Yeah. And then it passes and nobody is like, uh, you are wrong because we're too busy, you know, with all the new information coming our way to go back and look at what people said. Unless, of course, they want to cancel you for something horrible you said 10 years ago and, you know, crucify you over that, in which case there's a, a group of people with absolutely no lives that do that. Very unhappy people. That is my um, platform for today. And now we'll move on to our first story. What do we got? Rand's concluded. Yes. The Wolf of Wall Street joins the NFT craze, vowed never to leave it. Who is the Wolf of Wall Street? I haven't seen that movie. Uh, oh, that's Jordan Belfort. Uh, so first of all, go see the movie. You have to go watch the movie with Leo. I'm sure his friends call him that. Everybody else knows him as Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm sure people in the industry don't go, Leonardo. No, they call him Leo. It's a fantastic film about a scumbag of a human being. And mm. DiCaprio does a great job. It's one that I've watched multiple times. It's that good. So I would recommend you watch it. But Belfort, like he ripped off so many people. And there are people who revere him on Twitter. Like he's got a ton of followers and engagement. And he still goes out and he gives his talks. Uh, and like people have suggested we have him on the show on, on Bad Crypto. I'm like, no, I have no interest in talking to this guy. He like, mm. he just does not seem like a good human. Uh, I don't care how rich you are or how successful you are. If your character sucks, you suck. But here we are talking about him because he does carry a lot of influence despite any uh, moral scruples. Uh, he may or may not possess. Well, to be clear, we're talking about him because our producer put the story in the show notes. <laughs> I actually pulled the story out. Um, and I guess you clicked on it before I had a chance to do that. So I think it's fantastic. And yeah, he's in now. He, he talked crap about crypto and NFTs. Uh, but now he's on board because now he, he gets it. and He sees money. He's not the only one who was talking you know, crap about crypto and NFTs. Mark Cuban did it. Um, and now all he sees is money. And I don't know Mark, and he, I'm not putting him in the same category as Belfort uh, by any stretch. Mark's a successful entrepreneur, and I have no idea what his character is like. So I'll just assume the best. But there's a lot of people that were crapping on crypto before, um, and now they've seen the light, and then they become some of the biggest pimps. I suppose then the question is whether Jordan has hopped onto this train out of opportunism or because he legitimately sees the value. Now, in this article, the thing that made me uh, laugh hysterically before we started recording was the bullet point. Uh, he reasoned that the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent actions undertaken by world governments completely changed his mind on the asset. And of course, I thought that that was hilarious because anyone with any awareness of the consequences of both the pandemic and international state actions regarding the pandemic uh, would know uh, this has been the what is known as the single largest wealth transfer in the history of humankind, uh, at least in the modern age. And uh, uh, there, there is a question there as to whether he is pumping nfts on the grounds that there are more opportunity for everyone or if it's just opportunity for himself regardless i suppose that the key takeaway here is that this is another convert of a very successful individual who was once a naysayer and is now a believer 
who was once a scumbag and may still be don't know don't know all i know is he ripped off a lot of people um and so i i guess you know people can get a second chance i'm just not giving a one <laughs> so uh, there's an article that i want to refer you to in the show notes we're not going to go into it in depth here but it's a guest piece on coin telegraph that talks about nfts for freedom non-fungible tokens and the right to self-determination it's really an interesting piece by a, a guest um actually it doesn't say oh yeah here it is it's james cooper uh, professor of law at california western school of law in san diego uh, wrote this opinion piece with peter grazul and i think philosophically it's always interesting to go down the rabbit hole of where people see nfts fitting into society in general and what opportunities they provide for uh, for self-governance so you can find the link to that article and everything else we're going to reference in this episode in the show notes at nifty.show forward slash 104 that's where that's going to happen I am a big fan of the rights to self-determination that the author of this article is talking about, but in terms of government involvement in blockchain and or NFTs, I'm extremely wary. Mm -hmm. Kind of hard to self-govern when you've got a government telling you how and what to do. I, I think that this is worth bringing up. You know, the, uh, I, I recently said that until... Until this point, I had considered blockchain to be very much a moral good, but it's not a moral good. It is a technology which may be used for morally good things, may be used for morally evil things. And the first thing that comes to mind is uh, communist China's social credit system, mm -hmm. wherein your standing with the government is influenced numerically by whether you're taking actions that the government supports or disapproves of. And if that was something that was stored on blockchain, I can scarcely imagine something more dystopian. Yep. And there are those who want to bring the social credit score system here to the United States. And that uh, is a very, I mean, that's pretty much the, if that happens, now you're looking at the end of, you know, of freedom as we've known it. And it's truly going to, the, the whole crypto industry will become a more underground economy. Uh, because people want to be free. But it, it, it does seem unlikely, and it would be very far out. So, of course, we're not doom saying about anything. Doom! I say doom! He's doom saying. I'm not. Doom, doom I say. So, this is a story I believe we referenced uh, last week, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's here for us to go in more in depth, and that is that Rarible, the NFT platform has changed how minting fees are handled. And now if you are the buyer rather than creator, you are the one who is going to pay the minting fee for that NFT on Ethereum, you pay that gas fee. It's called lazy minting. And it looks like this is now rolled out. Still love the concept. Still think that the term lazy minting is uh, hilarious and they carry with it an undesirable connotation still would prefer that people stop using the uh, the gas giants that is ethereum but it has its momentum that's where a lot of the money is say la vie mm -hmm. la vie i said it there i'm sure you have something to say about this uh here from market dot businessinsider.com chinese tech giants tencent and ant are distancing themselves from the nft market after beijing's crypto crackdown what say ye yeah, here's some here's a little basic information uh, for our audience about why you should be a little wary about corporations that are deeply intertwined with the state. This is not a result of Tencent and Ants being Chinese companies, but the governance style that uh, the Chinese rulers are employing. Uh, effectively, wherein corporations are more susceptible to becoming proxies for state uh, whims, shall we say. Now, Tencent is a gargantuan company that has uh, a huge share in Epic Games, has a huge share in Riot Games, the creators of League of Legends, the most played video game on the planet, uh, or maybe second most. Well, Minecraft. How, might be how many most. millions do you think play uh, LOL? Oh man, I, I would have to say there, there must have been hundreds of millions of accounts 
over the course of League of Legends lifespan, and it's still extremely popular. Um, it, it can be a very fun game. Uh, they they have invested in a great many major Western gaming companies, uh, and it has it has brought them clearly a, a lot of profits because these games continue to be ex- exceedingly popular. There but you what, go. What's the I, actual story here? I, I well, I just want to show this. I'm showing everybody. I just found this. There's this ticker that shows how many people are playing League of Legends live right now at this moment, estimated 886,596 people. That seems a lot lower than when it was uh, at its height, but that is still a very large number of people people online right now. Yeah. So, okay, Uh, the the core of the story, as you were saying. Well, what, what is the core of the story? I haven't even read the headline. Well, so first of all, you know, China has, for the umpteenth time, banned... Uh, Bitcoin and crypto mining. And so these companies that are Chinese based are um, changing the wording that they're using on their website, distancing themselves from NFTs. They're calling them digital collectibles. A rose by any other name is still a rose. They're still NFTs. But, you know, I think they're scared that the government's going to say, you know, you can't sell these digital collectibles. Uh, uh, through any of the games or marketplaces that that you own. Um, so two points. First off, can you confirm that the majority of crypto mining is now done in the U.S.? The U.S. is overtaken now. So China has made um, crypto mining illegal. They've banned it, which means if you're a Bitcoin miner, you have to be out already. So they've all left. Other mining um, needs to be out by the end of the year. Okay, so that is definitely happening, but a huge mistake for China, huge. And and here here's the thing: China, as uh, Travis and I have talked about on Bad Crypto, they have a 500 year plan, right? They don't think short term; they are planning dynasties. And the president, you know, has pretty much made himself president for life over there. And um, so they're they're definitely um, have you know. Total, totalitarian and dictatorship type leanings there. So, but um, I don't think that they, the old school, the old guard there understands that their 500 year plan is totally disrupted by Bitcoin and crypto. They didn't see this coming, which leads to this story that I saw today. Could China be about to unban Bitcoin? It reminds me of Job in Arrested Development. Made a huge I've made a mistake. huge mistake. <laughs> yes. So I, I, I might disagree on the grounds that something as liberating and anonymous as blockchain and as Bitcoin could be scary to dictatorial types because they don't see how they can gain the control over it that they would like to possess over their citizenry. Yeah, I, I don't disagree, but at the same time, if they had, they, think of the tax money and the profits that the government could make, um, you know, they're, they're definitely all about money and control. In fact, the two are intertwined as far as they're concerned. So, uh, you know, these tech giants, a lot of people, uh, they're going to they're gonna leave. The Chinese miners have left. They're looking for other places to set up. And I, I know for a fact, after talking to friends here in Puerto Rico, that they are finding new power plants to set up their gear outside of China. They're not going to stop mining Bitcoin. They're just not going to do it in China. And All of this so, to say that th- this appears to be fantastic news for the rest of the world economy, because correct. China is voluntarily leaving an enormous chunk of it, a growing chunk of it, on the table for the rest of us enterprising souls to take advantage of. And we like that. Speaking of enterprising souls, <laughs> Trump is in the, the news <laughs> again. So uh, last week, you know, they had this, uh, they announced this new platform that um, that he, apparently him or his company is going to be launching, which is a social media platform. I don't have any comments about that, but there is a new NFT by a company called uh, Created. They're missing the second E because in 2021, we don't spell anything right. Uh, and they're a public company that went up 30% last Monday. Uh, After they announced they were selling a Trump NFT for 240 Ethereum, which at the time was about a million dollars. 
and there are three photos of Trump. Uh, I don't know who's going to buy them, but uh, he's an NFT. Hold on, I, I love this. Let's let's get let's get back into the meat of this article here because I want I want to highlight something. The the way that this this article is headlined might suggest that this is uh, an NFT that is affiliated with with Donald Trump personally or that it is in his favor. But I just like to read out this this really juicy highlight. The digital image. Um, that is this NFT, features three photos of Trump snapped long before his presidency, signing the bare chest of a woman described on Created's site as an Ivanka lookalike. They say a picture is worth a thousand words and the Trump photographs are no exception, Created founder Jeremy Frommer said in a statement. So this particular NFT, um, this use case is the immortalization of something that uh, would be embarrassing or humiliating or discrediting to a uh, of, figure. of a moment that that took of place. Course. And uh, listen, I mean, nobody ever thought Trump was not a playboy in his past. Of course, Absolutely. he was, you know, as a He's billionaire, probably still a playboy, probably still is. Uh, although Melania probably keeps him in line. To, you know, you're married to a, a, a Russian supermodel. You mean, <laughs> <laughs> what, what are your needs? I mean, come on. So, um, yeah, I, I, this is not going to be the last. Of course, we mentioned last week the undead presidents where all of the living presidents were made into an undead form. I believe that that sale is actually live right now with those NFTs. And there'll be more, you know, Trump type NFTs, just like there will be no shortage of Elon Musk NFTs. People combining uh, Elon with the popular Doge meme. And of course, he talks a lot about Dogecoin offering the dogs of Elon. Uh, 10,000 unique Doge NFTs that I guess look Elon-ish. Let's actually, I'm going to pull up the website here. Dogs Top of Elon. Okay, .io. wait, wait. It's dogs of Elon.io, but you could also read that as dogs of felon. <laughs> dogs of Which felon. is the first way that I read it. These don't, these don't look like Doges. It looks, some of them have Doge backgrounds, but they're all just Elons. They're all yeah. Elon Musk. They're they're all Elon. They are. Uh, let's see how how much is it to make Okay, seventy zombies. What? So here's the thing. Um, the sale is live as of right now, and only a hundred and one have been minted. But there's limited availability of them. This is uh, endemic in the NFT world right now. People are jumping on to what they think will be a hot property that they can sell 10,000 of at 0.08 ETH. Okay, let's do some math on that 0.08. Well, times 10,000 is 800 ETH, right, which is at $4,200. Now, so these people wanted to raise $3.3 million selling mm -hmm. these NFTs. And so far, it looks like people aren't buying it, literally yeah, just... aren't buying it. Per perhaps don't try to ride uh, someone else's success that hard you know we have we have a, a blockchain hero that's inspired by elon musk but we didn't do that in order to capitalize on who he is rather to spoof him in parody fashion correct and we didn't sell it individually as a that's piece correct. it was something you could get in a pack so all of this to say we're better than these people <laughs> <laughs> Oh, digital donuts, though. That's a whole different story. I mean, Ooh, you had zero me at, calories, bro. <laughs> you had me a donut. Digital is a little less tasty, though. <clears throat> so what are they doing? Digital donuts. Uh, the website is digital donut dot shop. I have not looked at this yet, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. All I know is my donuts are loading. Ooh, let's scroll down and see. This Ooh. website looks delicious. I know. So it's 3D art. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what are they trying to do? If you hold a digital donut NFT, you're supporting 3D artists. They're going to make uh, consistent donations to food banks, introduce more people to NFTs. They have a donut map. I just, I like donuts. I noticed that they, they actually had a meaningful hook into how this is 
for supporting 3D artists because they actually list on this website, you scroll past it. But one of the reasons why it's donuts is because a torus, which is what a donut is, that's the shape a donut is, that, that three-dimensional ring with a, a hole in the middle, um, that is often the first piece that a 3D artist will make because it's one of the simplest, one of the easiest things uh, a budding 3D artist can do to sort of get a, a grip um, on the rendering software that they're using. So that, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's just making me hungry. And I, and I don't see where I can actually mint a donut because I, I am so hungry that I would mint this donut right now. Only uh, I don't see that they're available yet. So you, you, you do not see. I don't. Oh, I guess there's a mint pass you have to have. And there's an alternate reality game, which is, you know, a sort of deep organic mystery puzzle series uh, involving a very large number of extremely nerdy methods of solving the puzzles. Oh, this I am, is kind I am of actually not nerdy enough for an org. This is kind of funny because they actually have created a fictional story and a game to go with it, which led people to a website, heraldsdonuts.com, which is <laughs> not, a, not a real thing, apparently. Um, and a fake, maybe it is, maybe it is a real thing. I, I don't know. Uh, I love when people get clever on the internet and, and do some fun things. So donut NFTs, there you go. Donut, let it pass you by. Zen Ledger launching non fungible token tax support. A lot of people use Zen Ledger to compute their taxes. And, uh, you know, every time you buy an NFT and then you sell it, it becomes a, uh, a taxable event. Did you know that? <laughs> Here's the problem I have, aside from the facts that this, this is. Uh, what is known as a taxable event, is the fact that what is being created now is a new kind of turbo tax. So here's a here's a fat friggin' red pill for everyone. The only reason why turbo tax exists is because they lobby the US government to keep the tax code too complicated for plebs like you and me to just figure our taxes out on our own. Because if we could figure our taxes out on our own, we wouldn't need TurboTax. And if you could figure your crypto taxes out on your own, you wouldn't need Zen Ledger. Well, if you, were, if you were good enough to figure out your crypto taxes on your own, you're probably also wise enough to find all of the legal shelters that you can for your, um, your capital gains because mm -hmm. there's plenty. And, uh, you know, right now, Uncle Joe is announcing something about, you know, more taxes on, uh, on, on gains. And all that's going to do is it's going to chase, you know, people who have money to other legitimate shelters. It might be something offshore uh, or it might be, you know, what they discover here within uh, the U.S. they can do, but you don't, you just don't make more money by raising people's tax. You don't raise money weight, raising taxes on the wealthy. The we, we have a lot wealthy. more stories to get to, but if you would like to learn something, um, just do a search for capital flight. It will be uh, very educational. Oh, Okay. We'll, we'll search for that. Maybe we'll put that in the show notes. Our lead story indicates more mainstream adoption on the way. Uh, there is no bigger app out there on the face of the earth that more designers use than Adobe Photoshop. And now you'll be able to create a NFT in your Adobe account. So instead of just saving uh, an image as a GIF or a JPEG or a PNG or as, you know, whatever else it's going to be, you can prepare it to be an NFT that will show a verified certificate proving that the arts source is authentic. Oh, uh, Scott Belsky is the Adobe chief product officer. And he says that attribution data created by the content credentials, which is a, a tool in Adobe, uh, will live on an IPFS system. The interplanetary file system is the standard that we use for hosting our NFT media because that's backed by blockchain. And decentralized. And if yes. they take it down in one place, it, it still lives on the others. So 
this is just another way to build digital management rights, as it were, into the images that that people create. And of course, you've really got intimate with Photoshop lately. I mean, you you didn't know much about it before we made NFTs, but now you're like becoming kind of an amateur pro. Uh, yeah, now I'm able to create animated Photoshop actions, which those are what we used to power the higher rarities of our previous blockchain heroes releases. I, mm -hmm. I developed a brand new career skill, but you are not going to catch me uh, actually doing Photoshop actions as a career because I don't like Photoshop. <laughs> well, I, I I might have to uh, you know ask you to to make something for me though. Yeah, you might. By the way, this article was written by Mitchell Clark, which I think is <laughs> kind of kind of ironic because uh, we're working with Clark Mitchell, uh, who is a veteran Disney and Hasbro designer on Draco dice. Uh, which, by the way, we're going to go in depth on Draco Dice um, next week on the Nifty Show before the product launches, because you guys do not want to miss what Zach has created and is doing. Uh, if you're not in the Discord yet, get in there because promo dice are being given away to Discord members at discord.gg forward slash Draco Dice, D-R-A-C-O-D-I-C-E. And the secondary market for these free promos is already $25 and up. Which humbles me, first off. But uh, start stacking wax now because that launch is coming up very quickly. By the way, I came up with something today. Um, at being part of the team, I'm always thinking about it. Uh, not as much as you are because your eyeballs deep in dice. Your, your buckets of dice deep. But in the, um, the crypto world right now, you know, we used to have ICOs and we had STOs. Now we have IDOs. Then that stands for initial distribution offering, right? And it's where tokens are distributed to early investors and become available on the decentralized exchanges for people to buy. So I think we call this an initial dice offering as an IDO. <laughs> That's what, what the sale nice. is. Very and, nice. An IDO. Um, I'm going to skip this story here. It's in the show notes. It's interesting. There's a lot of bridges that are being built right now to swap NFTs from one chain to another. NFT News Insider has a story about an Ethereum to Cardano bridge. Cardano's doing some interesting stuff in the NFT world. It's not yet found its stride. Uh, although I, I think it might. More interesting to me are the chains that have made a dent already, and that includes Binance on their NFT marketplace. They've made quite a dent. Uh, you know, we had the, the Lucky Duckies um, that we talked about last week on the show. All those things sold out. The ducks are cool. There's a lot of business going on. And now Binance is being super smart, and they've created a, a what they're calling initial game offerings. So these are sales of NFTs from top tier gaming projects that are exclusively made available on Binance. I do not like it. I do not like it at all. I do not like it here or there. I do not I like do it not anywhere. Like it anywhere. Which no. part of it don't you like? Because there's several things to not like. IGO, that, that's just playing off of financial terms where initial, uh, initial public offering obviously inspired this. Gamers don't care about this gamers don't care about initial public offerings well it's like they, gamers and gamers invest on kickstarter sometimes but they don't call those ipos yeah but people this in is, the blockchain world do and i looked at their first igo today and it's basically it's an nft sale but they all sold out super fast um sure. i can't buy because i'm a u.s citizen and binance.com is you know here in the land of the Dude, free home of the brave not yeah. only does it not appeal to gamers it's going to appeal to money people it's going to appeal to finance people and as someone who wants to leverage blockchain in games and expand the blockchain gaming space i want to target gamers i want to see gamers targeted i want to see gamers catered to not financial people because they don't have a stake in the product they only have a stake in the value of the product so are you opposed to calling the initial dice offering an idea <laughs> tbd okay 
Well, I'm going to call it that anyway. So I, I haven't been into Central Land in a long time, but I did check in for a few minutes at the first Metaverse Festival that took place in the Metaverse of Decentraland here just last week. It was several days event and there were there were concerts and there were people dancing and there were booths and it was it was pretty damn cool. I didn't have a lot of time to walk around, but they had some musicians in there and entertainers and uh, Decentraland is starting to come together, um, including on day three, Saturday Night Fever with Dead Mouse. I am still a bit torn on digital events that are held like this. I'm not quite sure what's to think. What have you participated yet? I have uh, attended a couple. Yes. Before I stopped playing Fortnite, um, they had already begun their sort of exploration into what a metaverse means, taking the game beyond the battle royale formats that the game uh, was popularized as. Um, I I think I I need more insight into the public's opinion on this. I want to know what everyone else thinks about these things. Here here is what I can tell you without a doubt. Ready or not, here it comes. Um, the metaverses are being built sandbox, the sales that sells out every time they sell land, the central land, the value has gone up more events are happening in the central land. Um, crypto voxels completely sold out, built out to a large extreme Vulcanverse, you know, this MMO game um, that's being built where Pyre tokens are now over $10 and they're building all kinds of great staking events for living in this metaverse and all of these, not all of them, a lot of the generative NFT projects that are being created are going to be using land in sandbox or decentral land for their metaverses, including Snoop Dogg, who's, you know, going to be putting on events in his own Snoop Dogg world. And he's just, he's not the first, but he's definitely not the last. There's going to be quite a few people doing this. And so here's what I've been saying. Uh, 2020 was the year of DeFi. And when I say the year of that, what that means is that's the year that early adoption begins happening and you get your first media hype cycle. Doesn't mean it's the first year that it's happened. Just means that this is where people start getting the buzz and everybody starts talking about it before we go through the down cycle and then on to the, the eventual mainstream. Um, 2021, the year of NFTs, as is evidenced by all the media hype. Um, 2022 is going to be the year of play to earn. You're going to hear incessantly about all these games and about all these people, all these teenagers and people in their 20s. We're going to have an unprecedented number of new millionaires made from this youngest age group. In 2024, 20, yeah, 2022, 20, 23 will be the year of the metaverse. That's when we're going to, you're going to get to the true early adoption of the metaverse and hearing a lot of talk about it. 2024 is the year we go mainstream. Hmm. You're confident. Well, I mean, as much as my futurist crystal ball says, I'm just, I'm projecting out based on what I, you know, what I'm observing and what I have observed. I'm, am I going to be completely accurate? Probably not, but it's definitely, that is the, the trajectory that we seem to be on. There's a lot of things that can, you know, change depending upon the world economies. But I'll tell you, if the, the world economies collapse, um, as long as we still have crypto and these metaverses, that just provides opportunity for people to find other ways to leverage their skills and talents to make money. Yeah, you know, I think the, the problem that I have is how we may be inadvertently training ourselves to be permanently and extremely online it's ready player yeah. one which you never read did you and no but i am familiar with the general gist of the story so the the book worth reading i haven't watched the film because i've heard the film is crap but the book is definitely worth reading and very relevant to uh, where we are now and yes that like I say, ready or not, here it comes. The world is changing and we are moving into the metaverse. Uh, I think it's very important that we hold on to our humanity and our connections and, you know, meeting IRL. I mean, we can't even say it without using an acronym anymore. <laughs> I like <laughs> With, meet space. 
Meat space. Yeah, meeting okay. in meat space. Meat space. Who, as long as who there's is meat going there. to be left in meat space once everyone is on the metaverse? This is this is going to be like the closest that we've ever come to uploading our consciousnesses to uh, to a digital dimension because we're just going to spend all of our time interacting with it. I don't know. I'll see you in meat space. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's gonna be great. You're actually coming to Puerto Rico soon. We'll be in meat space together. <laughs> and you know what we'll do? We'll have some meat. <laughs> we, we, we will have some meat and meat space. GameStop, more mainstream adoption. They're hiring a team of NFT and Web3 specialists as they push into the future of the internet. They posted eight jobs related to NFTs and Web3.0 on Monday. So if you're in the space and want to work for, uh, for GameStop, uh, maybe you just like the stock. I don't know. I want to There's... speculate about why they're doing that. I think mm -hmm. that they want to establish uh, NFT expertise so that they can set up licensing agreements with major game publishers. I think that they're trying to get ahead of the curve and discover this before the game publishers themselves discover it. I think that that's interesting. Are, are you certain about that? No. <laughs> you're just prognosticating. No, yeah, you might be right. I don't know, but you know, technology company is got a, they got a technology and clearly the writing is on the wall. Uh, so in the, uh, the sports world, the professional bull riders are going to be making uh, branded content fan tokens and NFTs. So why not? Why not? If, if Rob Gronkowski can make horrible NFTs, that I guess some people bought. Who doesn't want a Chad Burger Bull NFT? For the I did not run? know that this was actually a sport. In hindsight, I probably should have expected that it was a sport. And I certainly don't have the balls to do what those people are doing, what the guy who's almost flying off of the rear of that steer is doing. <laughs> After riding that bull, I'm not sure he had the balls either. <laughs> <laughs> I would think that would be like, bye bye. I... See I am yeah. sure there is protection involved. It, it's oh, been it's oh been boy. great knowing you guys. Take it take it easy. <laughs> uh, George Romero, who is the George C. Romero, the son of the late George Romero, who created the Dawn of the Dead um, zombie genre. Really, you know, many many years ago, uh, is also a comic book writer and a filmmaker, and he is working with Heavy Metal Magazine to do an NFT drop that is quite spooky i'm going to play this video here with the sound off so we can just kind of comment on it as it's playing here by the way if you are just listening you're missing all the pictures the pictures are on the video at nifty.show forward slash youtube it's where you can uh, see them all and but if you just like listening to us and you know we can just zach just kind of describe these pictures uh, i'm i feel like I'm, I'm looking at a comic sequence is that jfk mm-hmm it looks like has he been zombified already i hope so is it already hit him is that blood he's drinking oh my gosh is that jackie there sitting on the other sofa how how cool is it that the family business for the romeros is zombies <laughs> what do you do i'm in the family business brains brains. so they're calling it the rise nfts with heavy metal and crypto.com is what these are they're launching actually on the 27th of october just before halloween uh tomorrow if you listen to the show fresh on the crypto.com nft marketplace which i don't know that i've seen yet so uh this actually just links to their twitter and then if we go to crypto.com forward slash nft we take another hop and we should end up directly at the crypto.com there we go there we go there's drops happening right here on the uh, the NFT marketplace. Wow, they're going Ooh. full out Halloween. It's a uh, zombie mermaid. There, <laughs> there we go. Heavy Metal Magazine and Romero Pictures present The Rise, a motion comic documentary. So that's what you were looking at there. What? A motion comic. <laughs> oh, you asked too many questions. All the answers are in the show notes, guys. Go there and check them out. Also in the show notes, links to an upcoming launch, which Blockchain Heroes are a part of. You guys have waited long enough. You want to see some cool reimagined Blockchain Heroes done sneakerhead style. This is, uh, we had Mark Skeppy from Sneaker Wars on the show uh, last week. 
and sneakerwars.com, S-N-K-R-Wars.com is dropping on Halloween on Solana, um, priced very reasonably, one soul for a five card pack. And uh, you want to go check these out because they're super baller. About how much is a soul these days? Uh, soul is at about $205 right now. It's gone up like 36% this week. It's like, ba-boom, people are, Solana has got a lot of traction and their marketplace is booming. I would say they're probably approaching a million dollar, a billion dollar market cap. In fact, let's look at solanalysis.com. Uh, the market cap right now is $815 million. So they are definitely approaching a, a billion dollar market cap of Solana NFTs. So are, are they beating wax? Uh, you know, I don't know what the wax market cap is. Probably, probably, but I don't know that for sure. So maybe, maybe, probably, definitely could be. I don't know. Uh, speaking of wax, lots of cool wax stuff happening. In fact, one of these things just happened this week. I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but uh, on wax, the Hasbro's Power Rangers offered a one card NFT pack of a digital Zord NFT that's redeemable for a special edition Zord Ascension Project Mighty Morphin Dino Megazord. And there it is. <laughs> there it is. There was 2,000 of these. Uh, some people balked at the price. They sold for $199.99, which is basically $200. Um, and they sold for fiat but they're in your wax wallet. You open the pack up and you get a coin. In fact, I will show you, cause I bought one cause I buy all the things. I bought a pack. I was able to open it up yesterday and somewhere in my wallet here, let's see if I can track it down, is the item, which I apparently I have one week from um, November 1st through 7th, I believe to redeem this ah here it is okay so they're all the the ones in the packs are all one of ones so this is the one that that i got the mz nft 0225 looks like some voltron stuff like a bunch of a bunch of animal robots plugged into each other yeah so it says here that I must redeem it between November 1st and November 8th on the Hasbro uh, Whitney site in order to get this collectible figure. I hope I get to keep the NFT. Oh, here it is. The owner will receive a power coin airdropped and then you redeem the coin. So you get to keep the, uh, the NFT. But mm. this, is, this is wax. This is Hasbro. This is like one of the biggest toy companies in the world launching on wax how is wax just 31 cents see here you go you could see all of the different the one of ones there was two thousand of these different figures that are available and the cheapest one on the marketplace right now is three hundred dollars it doesn't look like those are generative in the way that most generative projects are one of ones because it looks like there's identical images that are simply against different backgrounds yeah because yes. this, this is like toy inspired these are actual like physical um models that they took pictures of right and That's they gave them like. they gave them different numbers so this is you know 447 this is 515 but each one is treated as a is a one of one basically so is is that still buying a digital identity as as some people have been saying that generative collections are I don't know. It's but well, in this case, you're buying, you bought this pack, which are mm -hmm. here. The cheapest pack is now 370 unopened, mm -hmm. which then led to one of these Power Rangers toys. And if you've opened it, um, you'll get the airdrop of the coin, which is then redeemable for the physical toy. So I will soon have a Power Ranger on my shelf behind me <laughs> never bought a power ranger in my life i don't even know if i ever even bought one for you when you were a kid because we weren't no. really into power rangers it was, uh, mom always thought it was too violent but honestly i always thought it was too low budget so 
I'll see your violence and raise you one stinky low budget. <laughs> so this is big and this is wax. And this news just came out today. Um, another small brand is launching on wax. <sighs> Look at this. Yeah, this this one blows me away. Hot Wheels, baby. Challenge accepted. Look at these. I love the packaging. It's the packaging of the NFTs themselves are Hot Wheels packages but with so animated sweet. cars on them they they are beautiful i love these animations oh they look so good i am on this like white on rice i i especially like this one the rip rod here this would be awesome it's so <laughs> fun how many different cars do they do they have do they actually list it because I, I haven't been able to find it i don't know here's what i do know they're offering two packs a four pack and a ten pack and the prices are reasonable yeah, they're yeah, reasonable. They 15 bucks for a four pack, 35 bucks for a 10 pack. I, look at it. It's a garage door and it goes up and they're they're all all the NFTs are there inside the garage. Super this, stylish. So beautifully done. Um, and there's free promo packs uh, that they're giving away 2000 of them on their live stream November 13th. And uh, looks like the sale then takes place on November 16th. So uh, a link to this in the show notes as well. And I know you and I are both going to, I'm sure they'll have a queue system and maybe we'll get in. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Remains to be seen. Something I, I've noticing is that, you know, the standard for other collectible projects that aren't driven by established multi-million dollar brands is roadmaps, right? <laughs> but I think, you know, the, these huge brands can still probably get away without roadmap so the question is when are they going to start gaining interest in providing additional value as opposed to simply selling collectibles because it's got to happen at some point yeah well i mean uh, who knows i guess depending upon how these sell and i'm sure they'll sell out hot wheels can always bring utility to these you know wouldn't mm -hmm. it be great to be able to race your cars in a That's game kind of the no-brainer you know yeah you own them and you set them, you know, free on the track. They, they actually released a game um, somewhat recently, which uh, was was very well reviewed. And it's got, like, I want to say, a couple hundred Hot Wheels cars in it. But man, that would be just a natural fit for being able to integrate your collection into you know, making them actually playable. I hope we can get somebody from uh, this team on the show to talk about it and put that out to the wax team and say, get in here. Well, it, that doesn't, it's not the end there. There's more on wax garbage pail kids are back. Um, and as, as much as we're not happy that tops has taken major league baseball to the avalanche chain. Um, and they did Godzilla, which was a, a pretty meager sale on avalanche. Mm. They are not abandoning the GPK audience and they are launching Nifty Kids GPK, all one of one avatars um, with raredrop.io. And what's really fun about this, Zach, is if you go to raredrop.io and you log in, you can actually play with combinations of different characters and see, you know, what would they look like? So let's take, you know, I want a, a Mad Mike with a TV Stevie head and a Atom Bomb body. Uh, and uh, let's see, a dead Ted mouth <laughs> and a rapping Ruth hairstyle. What, what you, I noticed is that these these are all established classic Garbage Pail Kids characters. So this mm -hmm. generator is taking from those sort of all stars to yep. create the unique avatars. And each one of them will be unique. 329 wax. There's 10,000 of them available. Uh, goes live 42 hours and 22 minutes from now. You do the math. All I know is it's coming soon. Raredrop.io. And after I saw Raredrop, I had a hunch I knew who it was. And I, and I reached out to their team and I say, have whoever's in charge contact me uh, because I was talking to somebody probably, do you remember when I first brought you the idea of doing custom heroes for blockchain heroes? Yes. I was talking to uh, the guys at uh, heroes.market and gpk.market. Uh, sure enough, it's them. And uh, this tool will be used for more than just GPK, they're just launching with tops, which I think is pretty exciting.
I like the sound of that, making these projects even easier to implement artistically. Mm -hmm. uh, one last story from the wax space, because it's a very waxy week. Uh, Nefty Blocks is doing a collaboration set, which somehow we missed it, maybe because we're just eyeballs deep in creating our own stuff right now. But they've got 39 different NFT collections that are going to be in their uh, community Halloween pumpkin pack. And uh, you'll be able to get these these NFTs. There's a link to uh, their marketplace here on the Twitter. And uh, looking forward to seeing who's in that. I, I like I love community stuff. And when you know you don't see this on Ethereum, there's they do collabs like one offs. Hey, if you bought a you know a, a, a cool cat, now you can mint this other NFT, right? Those types of collabs. But there's been nothing like this where the community comes together and offers their NFTs in one pack. Because on Wax, we have an actual community. Our, our entire blockchain is just one big happy family with, with little exception. It really is. I mean, there's a, there's a few things going on that, you know, the community is not happy with, especially when people don't deliver on uh, what they say they're going to do. But... Uh, by and large, it's a pretty great place to be. And uh, this is also a great place to be. As always, I've enjoyed um, co-hosting with you, Sir Lord Zach, although you're not a Lord yet. We can, but we can, fix that. we can fix that for $49.95 to establish titles.com. <laughs> I, I don't want land in Scotland. <laughs> tough, tough. You're going to be a Lord whether you like it or not. It's what I'm getting it for Christmas, laddie. Can, can I be a Duke? <laughs> Duke, Duke, Duke. I don't think so. I don't think there's, I don't think that's an official title that can be, unless. Or, or a baron. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Baron. Well, we could research, like, what, where do you that's need true. to How own? does one become a baron? <laughs> Siri, how do I become a baron or a baroness? You just activated someone, Siri. I know, now. and they hate me for it. So it's probably a good time to end the show. Catch you guys on <laughs> Thursday's show where it's going to be lit what do we got coming up here on thursday let's see thursday's live show at five o'clock um it oh oh yes this is awesome i have to look myself to see thursday live at five eastern time we have john from ultra rare they licensed the uh texas chainsaw massacre brand this is perfect right before halloween and they're doing generative leather face nfts they're going to be coming on the show to talk about that then this project i just i love this one so much and i cannot wait to talk to this guy um zach remember i used to paint in our home i used to you know make these landscapes yes i remember there were some happy little trees in there Right. And that was that was Bob Ross who inspired mm -hmm. me to do that. And of course, Bob Ross inspired millions of people around the world to paint. Uh, this generative set is called Happy Little Hairdos. <laughs> <laughs> They're Bob Ross inspired NFTs. And then uh, some real mind blowing stuff as we talk about the Internet computer, our upcoming launch of blockchain heroes on ICP, a truly, truly decentralized chain that has the potential to uh, change how we nft the guys from tonic labs bob is going to be on from tonic labs and we're going to talk to him it's going to be a great show join us live on thursday five o'clock eastern at nifty.show forward slash youtube or any of our twitters or our facebook page all the places wherever you like to watch and uh, we'll catch you guys then until then zach knows how to take us home now don't you stay back no! <laughs> no! No! Keep it nifty. Oh. Keep it nifty. <laughs> <laughs>